Hey guys, you made it to the last video of our complete intro to Blender course here on YouTube. In this video, we're going to cover the subdivision surface modifier. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, go ahead and start a new file. So in the file menu option, pick new general. I've already done that, so I'll hit escape here. And you'll start with a default cube. Let's go ahead and delete that default cube. So shift X, then enter to delete. And then let's add a new mesh, shift A, go to the mesh menu, and let's add the monkey. Now in this lesson, we're going to look at the subdivision modifier. So let's go ahead and go over to the modifier properties. That's that wrench icon. Go ahead and click on it. And then let's click add modifier and come to the subdivision surface modifier and click on it. You'll notice something happens to the monkey right away. Now over in the right hand side for the subdivision surface modifier, where it says levels viewport, go ahead and click the left arrow to take it down to zero. And that takes us back to the original monkey. Now we're gonna use the monkey for just a few minutes to discuss high level what the subdivision surface modifier is doing for us. And then we'll dig in a little deeper with another mesh on how to use it. So first let's press tab to switch to edit mode and click once in space to deselect everything. If you zoom forward towards the monkey and orbit around, you realize this is a very crude geometry representing the monkey. And so by crude, we mean that it's not very smooth here. So we can see lots of facets and faces here. And in general, what you tend to do when you're creating 3D models of even things that you intend to be smooth in Blender, like say this monkey maybe needs to be a nice smooth looking monkey, you would still model things in a rather faceted way and then add something like the subdivision surface modifier to refine or make those curves a little more smooth. So press tab to go back over into object mode and the subdivision surface modifier where it says levels viewport, go ahead and click once to the right and it immediately smooths that up quite a bit. Then let's go over and click to the right again and you see it gets even smoother and let's do it a couple more times up till four and you realize how much smoother this monkey looks. So if you were doing some sort of character modeling or even if you were building an object like a chair or something else that needed to have really smooth curves and transitions, you could see how you might start with something that looks quite faceted and then add the subdivision surface modifier to make it look a little nicer. Now the viewport levels here is gonna be that level of detail or level of smoothness that we see here in the viewport. And then render, we haven't gotten to this yet, but when it's time to output or render an image, you could have a different set of levels for your render output. Okay, so we have a high level understanding of what the subdivision surface modifier is or what it does, but now let's dig into exactly how we would use it and take full advantage of it. So go ahead and delete the monkey, shift X and enter to delete the monkey. Then shift A, we're gonna add a new mesh and let's add the cube back. You can zoom back a bit. Now, because that modifier had been added to the monkey, it's no longer there. So let's go ahead and add that subdivision surface modifier to this cube. So over in the modifier icon, click on the drop down menu and pick subdivision surface. And immediately something probably unexpected happens. But let's dig into what's going on here. Over on your number pad, press the one key or if you don't have a number pad, you can click on the Y to get to a side view here. And I'll zoom in just a bit. Then over in your modifier where it says levels for viewport, let's go ahead and click once to the left to take it down to zero. So from the side angle, we essentially just have a square here. So go over to your levels for the viewport and click once to the right. And you'll notice that we have one level of subdivision and our shape changes dramatically. So what happens here, and we covered this in a previous lesson, is that first of all, the surfaces on all the sides of the cube are being subdivided, but then there's another thing that's happening where those surfaces are being smoothed. 
And by smoothed, I mean that they're actually the geometry, the subdivision is actually adjusting so that the angle from one to the next is being lessened. So whereas we had a 90 degree angle at first, now that angle between faces here, you can see that that's definitely not 90 degrees anymore. Now to make this even more obvious, let's notice here this right here, this polygon right here, this is a four-sided polygon here. And notice that this face will have four more faces once you come over to the levels viewport and click once to the right. You notice now that face is one, two, three, four faces there. So that got subdivided. And then what we can tell from the outside here is also this got subdivided. So where you used to have an edge that was going from this corner to that corner, now you have a new subdivision here. So now the transition is even smoother. So we have an edge that goes from here to here, then here to here, instead of one edge that's going more directly. And then same here. So you notice this is starting to smooth out. And then if you go to the right again, it's hard to tell, but you have now multiple edges making up. So you have four different little edges, whereas before you used to just have one long edge here and one long edge here. And again, this bigger face here has now been subdivided multiple times. So rather than there being just four faces on the inside, there are 16. And the transition between each face is being smoothed out. So it's not as abrupt of an angle between each face. And you could go one more time to the right to go to four levels and it keeps on getting smoother. And so you can see how your cube turns into this sphere. So let's back it out one more time. Just go back to the left down to zero. So what the subdivision surface modifier is doing is it's subdividing the surfaces. So click once to the right. It's subdividing them and then starting to adjust the angle between them so that it gives off more and more smoothness. So again, noticing that there seems to be one edge here, you click to the right, now there's clearly two edges there so the transition can be smoother, and then so on. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here, and for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube, and this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and now, back to the lesson. Okay, so now let's go ahead and orbit. Now that we kind of understand what the subdivision surface modifier is doing, let's figure out how to get more control over it. So press tab, and remember that all modifiers are just being temporarily applied in a non-destructive way, but when you press tab, you're back in edit mode for that base shape, and that base shape is still a cube. So a few things you could do, go ahead and click once in space, and probably makes sense, but go ahead and press three on your top row of keys, and click once on this side face to select it, then press G for grab, and then Y for the Y direction, and as you move this face, you're also adjusting that underlying shape, and so the subdivision surface modifier is changing how that's working there. Let's go ahead and hit escape. We don't need to actually move that anywhere. Now, another thing though, is that it matters what kind of geometry you have. So let's say that even if we keep this cube the same, if we add extra edges or geometry to it, we can change how the subdivision works. So try this, click once in space, and then let's add a loop cut. So press control R and then hover over and we want a horizontal loop cut. Click once, notice it immediately adjusts what's going on here. And then if you slide this up or down, you see that you're having some control here. So what's going on? Let's go ahead and slide this up a bit, pretty close to the top, but not all the way and click. So what happens here is if you look at this in a side view, so press one on your keyboard here, the Subdivision surface modifier says, okay, we have an edge here and then a longer edge here. So for this longer edge, the subdivision surface modifier can take a very long time to gradually, gradually, gradually transition here. But with this shorter edge, it needs to make a much faster transition here. So this curve here is going to transition much faster and this one here is going to transition much slower. 
So you might expect, if we add another loop cut and move it closer to the bottom, what will happen to the bottom of this? Well, let's try it out. We'll orbit, zoom back, press Control R, and then let's go ahead and click and start moving this one down and then click. And you can see now you've turned this into a bit more of a cylinder because if you press the one key on your number pad, once again, you've given the shape some new geometry so that now you've said, okay, this transition down here is gonna be quick. And this transition from here to here is actually quite slow, which is why this can remain vertical through most of it. So I'll orbit back again into 3D. These edge loops are also called proximity edges. So the idea here is that you might wanna put edges in close proximity to other edges to gain more and more control over the shape and how the subdivision surface modifier transitions from the shape. So now let's try one more time to see if we can figure this out. Let's say we're gonna add another edge loop. We're gonna add it though vertically and then we're gonna move it over to the left. Can you imagine what's gonna to happen to the left side of the shape? Let's go ahead and try it. Control R, move your cursor around until you have that vertical edge loop. Click once, immediately it does something new there. And now as you move it around, you can sort of see how you can adjust it this way as well. So I'll click about there. So this would be adding these proximity loops to try to control how the subdivision surface modifier works. Of course, remembering all along that you could switch to face selection mode by pressing number three on the top row of keys on your keyboard click once on this top face, and then you could do something new like press E for extrude and extrude this up and then click. And you notice again, you're continuing to adjust the shape. And so you're going to adjust how that subdivision works. Let's go ahead and undo that. Control Z on your keyboard. And let's continue undoing all the way back to before we added any of those edge loops. So I'll continue to undo using the keyboard shortcuts until I get back to the sphere you can go ahead and do the same. Okay, so we can control how the shape works by adding geometry that could be extruding, insetting, using the knife tool, creating edge loops. Anything that adds geometry to the cube will change the way the subdivision surface modifier works on the cube. And of course, if we deform the shape of the cube, if we move one of the faces or rotate one of the edges or move a vertex or something like that, that will adjust the shape as well. But another thing we may want to do is figure out whether the edges themselves and the vertices, how they will behave relative to the subdivision surface modifier. Will they be nice and smooth like this? Or what if we wanted this shape to be creased at the edge? So let's see what creasing an edge would look like. Press N on your keyboard. That will bring up that side menu there. Then press two on your top row of keys to get to edge selection mode and click once on this top edge and you'll see information about that edge pops up over here. And you see that you have edge data here and you see here it says crease. So let's go ahead and try to see what happens if we increase this so that the crease is greater than zero. So click and drag to the right all the way till it's one and notice how that affects the underlying subdivision surface modifier. So it basically creases this such that that's a very hard and sharp right angle there, right at the edge. And then the rest of the subdivision modifier works as you would expect. Now you might say, well, this edge has a crease of one and so it's real nice and hard there, but it doesn't extend all the way across. And that's where we have the vertices data. So we have the edge data and the vertices data. So right now, the vertex here and the vertex here, those vertices have a crease of zero. So let's see what happens if we click and drag that all the way up to one. And now you see that that might behave the way you might have expected when we were creasing that edge. You would have to crease the vertices as well to get them to be all the way up to one. Of course, you can drag that a little bit to the left to ease it up a little bit if you wanted something more like that. And you could even ease back this crease just a tiny bit if you wanted something like that. So you could play around with the creasing of any of the edges or vertices to figure out how to further adjust the way the subdivision surface modifier will work. 
So I would encourage you, let's go ahead and go back to the subdivision surface modifier and back this down, the levels down to two. And what I would encourage you to do is think about playing around with editing this cube, so the actual underlying geometry of this cube, and seeing how the subdivision surface modifier will ultimately adjust that shape to look like a more smooth version of what you're trying to do. So play around for a while. Press K for the knife tool and go ahead and just add something to the top there and press enter. See what happens. Maybe you can select that and press G for grab and then move that up in the Z direction and see what happens. And play around and try some different things. Crease some edges, crease some vertices, and just get a real sense of how this works here abstractly. And then in an upcoming set of lessons, we'll have a few challenges where the subdivision surface modifier can be used on a more real world example. Congratulations, you made it through our entire complete intro to Blender course. Did you find this course to be helpful? Do us a favor and let us know why in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. From here, if you're serious about learning Blender, we can help. Head over to blenderacademy.com to learn more. And if you're not ready to get serious just yet, I recommend checking out one of these videos from our channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy blending!